What's up everybody, I'm John. I'm Isaac. And on today's episode of Cars and Cameras, we are working on a three-wheeler, but not any three-wheeler, Honda's smallest three-wheeler. And we are stuffing a frankly gigantic engine into it. So we are doubling the engine displacement and probably tripling the power output. This is a 1985 Honda ATC 70. I overpaid for this sucker over the summer, paid 450 bucks for it, but they're just so darn rare and I wanted one so badly, I didn't care. Uh, the 70 on it right now kind of runs at one engine speed and it's really slow, oh. it's really bad. Uh, so T-Bolt USA hooked us up with all the parts we're going to need to perform this swap. With a 140cc engine, should make like 14 horsepower, a exhaust for the ATC, wiring harness, carburetor, the whole nine. They actually hooked us up with wheel weights and sprockets because this engine was originally going to go on Ike's bike when we went up to West Virginia. We were expecting to stuff this engine on Ike's bike on the side of the road. Turns out we didn't need to, so it's getting a new home on the ATC. It'll be awesome to see this 140 on this bike. Three-wheeler. Three-wheeler. It's going to go like bananas. Ooh. It's bad in there. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, ready to get this thing uh, going? Let's get started, dude. Let's get started. Plug these fuel lines. Yeah, I've got to plug the old fuel lines. Got to figure out where our master link is. Yeah, it's got a little chain idler there. It's pretty neat. Tensioner, rather. There it is. Are we ready for the other engine uh, bolt? There you go. Um. All right, we have a little got bit more wiring, linkage. So yeah, got wiring, got a carburetor. Linkage. These have just the cutest little carburetor slides. Yeah. Okay, that's free. Did you want to just leave the exhaust on the engine, or did you want to take it off? Sure. I think we ought to take it off. Okay. Oh boy. No. Um. Yikes. We're gonna break. I mean. Yeah, probably. Oh man, the you know pegs what? Can come with it, right? The pegs can. I bet you the pegs won't fit on the 140. Well, we're gonna find out. I guarantee it won't fit. Why is that? Wider. Because the 140 is wider. Yeah. All right. So I guess we're ready for the one engine bolt. Yep. Let me know when you're ready. Ready. Yep. It's gonna drop. Um. I dropped the nut. Oh, I see it. It did. You do? Okay, thank you. Ready? Yep. To be honest with you, this thing is dead simple. Yeah. Are you going to grab the engine while sure. I get this bolt? All right, she's free. Yeah, we're looking at a massive size difference. I mean, the head is a lot bigger. Yeah. It's definitely wider. It's got more gears. Yeah. I'm not trying to derail this whole thing, but it would be sweet to put a coat of Porta 15 on that chassis. What do you mean? That's cool. I understand. What do you think? I'm not about it. He's not about it's it. It's cool, dude. <laughs> She's saying it's cool, but your eyes say something else. It'll be fine. It's all right. I'll do it later. I'll restore the same. I mean, I'm just going to paint it and then put the same junky plastic back on it. So we can just get it running for now. Let's just go ahead and do it now, dude. No, it's all right. <laughs> I don't like I don't like what you two have going on right now. I don't like it. Ooh. 
Welcome home. Where am I going? Okay, I see you here. This here. bolt okay, is here. Enough. Come on. There we go. Bam. That looks awesome. Yeah. It's good. So what you may not realize is that everything from the 49cc and a Z50 up to like a 190 on my Trail 70, it all uses the same two mounting points. So theoretically, this could get a 50, it could get a 70, get a 110, 125, 140, 150, 190, 212. 108. 108. Yeah, the <laughs> possibilities are endless. So you could put all kinds of different engine sizes in here because all the bolts are the same, or the places where they bolt in are the same. I guess we're going to have to use the electric start on this. Yes. So these ATCs come with a, a pull start, unlike your Z50 or your CT70, which is a kick start. Um, this doesn't have, a, you can't fit a pull starter on here, so we're going to have to use the electric start that's on it. Oh, man. Now we're talking, dude. That's the button. Yeah. Um, I can be lazy. <laughs> this whole thing just pulls off? I guess so. Oh, man, I can't believe you did that. Man, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. So it looks like I can go with the straight up. It's well, closed, but think, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Is it? Was it wanting to turn? Okay, so that's right. Okay, so that that, that'll be right. tightened. Okay, so we want to. So you want to go the other way. Got to push on it too. Okay, there you go. So all you gotta do now is you hold it tight. Yeah. And you'll whack it. Should have done this before. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to drop the engine? I mean, it's only one bolted, dude. Yeah. moved. You got it. All right, that puppy can just dangle. So, Jolly rivets. Yeah, I can drill this out and uh, hopefully I won't be making a mistake. I don't think I am because it's got the same Yeah, it's the same. Holes. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's just a new style. All right. So, the stock engine has a 13 tooth engine sprocket on it. The 140 comes with a 15 tooth. T-Bolt USA hooked us up with a 17 tooth because we told them we wanted to go 60 miles an hour on Honda 70s. I think the ATZ 70s getting the 17 tooth. I mean, going straight for it, right? Straight for it. Okay. <laughs> Ah yes, how could I forget our CDI and our voltage regulator. Okay. So now I just need to plug in uh, some leads to this starter solenoid. solenoid. And then we can jam it all in there and see if it runs with some engine oil. Can't forget the engine oil. Don't you think I should be able to run the cable this way? I think so. Yeah, why not, man? Yeah, buddy. What's it gonna do tomorrow? One more. That's it. You sure. What you only do two originally? Yeah. Okay. Now we're gonna install this nice shiny exhaust. Can't forget your uh, exhaust gasket here. They can be such a pain. Yes, they can, but not today. Uh, okay. I'll just uh, reroute it. I'll yeah. reroute it. It's not a big deal. And it goes something like that, right? Yeah. What it looks like. This thing's gonna look sweet. So, I'm hoping. How does it attach? It, I'm hoping it attaches it looks right there. Promising. Maybe it wants to attach over here somewhere. Yeah. There we go. Sweet. It's on there. Okay. 
Isn't the seat supposed to go in there somewhere? Uh -oh. So, I'm gonna try to scooch the exhaust as in as it can go. Yeah, for sure. Quite a bit more in there. I'll get one side, you get the other. Alright. One, two, three. Ooh. Look at that. Cool. Should have been doing this the whole time. That's a lot of oil in here, man. They really filled it up. They sure did. So the only things we have left to do is to hook up a fuel system and plug in our battery and we can hit our electric start. We went to the battery store and picked up this XTA9B slash BS. It should work, but we're going to have to remove the engine in order to install it. These ATCs never came with batteries. They were pull start only, but we're only going to be able to use electric start on this. So we're going to have to take the engine out, slide it into a nice place in the frame there, and then uh, should be great. Fuel system. Hooking up a temporary ground here to the engine just so we can make sure that battery is going to work for us. It should. There it goes. There we go. Cool. That's safety. Start is on. Did you want to do the honors? Sure, man. Choke. Choke. Dude. That's what's up. I think it's in neutral. You know how it spins sometimes when yeah. it's in neutral? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Don't hit the key. It's in neutral. Sweet. Ready? Yep. and then we can take it out to see if it makes a performance difference. Oh, you know it will. I mean, oh. I want to measure, let but me, right now I like quiet. Let me see what happens whenever I uh, take unplug the, the key. Unplug the key. Good call. Let's see if we need it. Uh, uh, yep, yeah, you got it. And nothing, so we need that key, don't we? Yeah. It's a... Uh, can just find a place to install the key. Yeah, that sounds good. Maybe like right here in the frame opening or something so it'll kind of be hidden. So, uh, cool. Yeah, let's uh, install this battery for good and keep on going, man. We're getting close. Yeah, man. We're putting the, uh, engine in service position so we can install a battery. Alright, here we go. Okay. So every time we have to change the battery, this is what we gotta do. That's right. It shouldn't be all that often, and if we were thinking a little bit better, we would have gotten the 
little adapter leads that'll go out the back for a trickle charger. If you're doing the swap, that's what you should do. Um, so you don't have to take everything apart just to charge your battery. Oh yeah. Like a glove, dude. All right, so we, we need to make some sort of a frame. Alrighty. All right, one thing I just noticed, guys, one thing, your tire's out of balance. Oh, it's bad. It's bad. But, he needs wheel bearings. It'll be fine for today. Will it? Are you sure? No. Okay. The cool thing about those bearings is you can spin those things for like a hundred miles. They will spin forever. Oh yeah. But they are noisy. So I do believe that we have the uh, battery hold down figured out. We need to drill a couple of holes in the bottom here. So sorry, John. And have a, uh, a bracket going across the top. To secure it. With hold downs to secure it. And uh, that should do it. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. So I guess I'll uh, get to that. All right, fun, fun. So basically the battery is going to be going into a slot like that, but on the other side. Of course everything's upside down, but I'm going to have to drill a hole on either side of the battery So for our hold downs. I'm just going to send it. So you're thinking a strap, cut it there, drill a hole, drill a hole, bolt, bolt. Yes, sir. Perfect. That looks good to me, man. Oh, now it wants to roll. Breaking out my trusty wiring kit, huh? Ooh, look, we already got one. Oh, nice ground it's, strategy. It's yellow, but it's okay. It should work fine. The brake. All right, so since we have to use this ignition key system here, I'm gonna build a bracket so that I can install it right here and we can mount it to the frame without having to cut anything and it'll be a nice discreet location. So I already drilled a hole in it and I just need to touch it up with the file. So let's get to work. With a little bit of negotiation, I got it to fit. Nice. Well, you say that. Oh boy. Did it get janked up? No. Bracket's done. Looks really clean, I gotta say. So, I think we're gonna need to install the engine before this gets put on. So before you hook up this ground, you're gonna want to hook up the positive because you're gonna be touching frame when you go to Hook up the negative? Hook up the positive. Oh. So if you leave the negative disconnected, when you go to hook up the positive, the wrench can hit the frame and you won't have any zaps. Okay. But if you... <laughs> but if you have... Yeah. <laughs> Just make sure you hook it nice, up dude. without the ground. That's hooked. a good anti-theft right there. All the wiring's installed. Our engine is back in. Everything is pretty much hooked up. Now, our cover for our starter solenoid it doesn't really fit. We've run into this in the past and what we've done is just use the cover the best we can and then just wrap the snot out of it with electrical tape. So far no smoke. And it can just get bolted. Yeah dude. Just that spot right there on the other side of the carburetor if possible. Well, I'd have to space it out. I mean we still have this emergency cutoff switch so it's a good anti-theft because it's like right beside the air filter. So uh, I guess I can go ahead and put a fuel tank on. Yeah, man. You didn't do this at all, right? You didn't no, you did, why? What do you mean, I did? 
Yeah, I didn't touch any of that. You didn't put the fuel lines on? Or were they on there when you bought the thing? They were on there when I bought the thing because okay. it had a new carburetor. He's got a fuel filter there. Yeah. He doesn't have a fuel no filter there. No fuel filter there. Yeah. Oh well. What'd you do with the uh, fuel line? All right, dude, I don't have any clamps, so just take it easy. Does not fit. Man. Yes? No. No? No, no, no. It you, fits. Are you serious? <laughs> it fits. I mean, we. you can say no, that's fine. Fine, dude. No, nah, man. If it works, bro. Oh. Steering? Steering. If it's not one thing, it's another. Yeah. So, so that's a major problem. So we're gonna modify the intake. Gonna have to modify the intake. All right. All right, you got air in the tires, guys. Cool. All right, dude, I think that tank is going to have to come off because I'm afraid of that. That means you gotta take the seat off. Yeah, can you hand me the gun? It's uh, kinked. It's we need really ex kinked. extra fuel line. More fuel line. Yep. Yeah. Ooh! What's up? Uh. Ooh. Undo. Abort. It's gonna be rubbing up against the tank. Are you fine with that? Yeah. All right, I'm on there. In the uh, PS de Ristons. Air filter. You on? Oh, yeah. I think all our wiring is hooked up. Um, our seat is on, the tank is on. We gotta do a little bit of stuff for the intake manifold. Yeah, we got air in the tires. It's looking pretty good, dude. Is it ready? I think it's ready, man. Alright. Let's see, see what happens. Oh, dude. Is it good? It's good. I'm gonna try to crank it. There it is. Alright, I don't know which way is a. Uh... Oh. He's gonna be okay. That thing does look pretty quick. It's a 140. It's nuts. So me and John figure it's about time for a good old fashioned Cars and Cameras Grand Prix lap. Now this is going to be the 2020 Grand Prix track that we're running. We still need to build a new track. We're still working on ideas for the uh, new track. So uh, are you ready? Yeah, let me just fire up my vehicle without breaking sweat. That is so nice. So are you ready? Oh, I was born ready, bro. On your mark. 
Get set! My guess is it's going to be a minute and five seconds on this lap. Oh man! Oh, 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 oh! have been the most fun I've ever had around that track. Really? Not even kidding. All right, how bad is the uh, mud? Probably two or three seconds slower like everything else in the winter uh, because of the mud. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit sketchy at times. You know how on a mini bike you can't really take it full speed through there? Yeah. Kind of same deal, man, because you know, the front wheel gets caught in a groove and then you start doing that. And Okay. Yeah. But I don't want to know my time. Just screenshot it. And you'll do your lap and we'll reveal our times at the same time. Okay. This thing's so much fun. All right. Are you ready, buddy? I'm ready. Mike's Cars and Cameras Grand Prix lap. On your mark. Get set. So I feel like our gearing might be a tad too tall because on that uphill section it is dogging just a little bit, but otherwise it is perfect. So what do you think, man? Uh, it's a riot. It is awesome. It's a riot. Uh, I, I choked up on a few of the, uh, I went and just like, uh, you know, the downhill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I slowed way down, okay. way too fast, way too much. Did you slow down for that? I did, yeah, okay. more than necessary. Do you remember my time? Yes. Okay, you ready to reveal each other's times? Yes. One, two, three, one. one. One, two, three, one. One, one two, three, three. One. <gasps> yeah. I beat you! You're a 111 flat, dude. You were a 113.91. Can I go again? Yes! Sweet. Can I go again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you go now. Are you ready? Take two. On your mark. Get set. Go. <laughs> I'm so 
sorry. Oh man, <laughs> you wrecked it. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah i did poor thing dude uh it seems okay yeah you were slower you were looking really good up until i heard a crunch yeah i felt so good on it too yeah all right well now my, i get one more try my advice what was my time it was a 114.91 what and i flipped it yeah it was really fast it's gonna be a fast lap i flipped it it was on its uh, side yeah I unrolled it, yeah. hopped on it, and started going again. Yeah. Guess where I flipped it? In the really, really trenchy part. In the woods. Yeah. In the trenchy part. Sorry, bud. It's okay. The front tire, like you said, got caught in the groove. Yep. And it did this number. Yeah, and, and then it tumbled. Yeah. And I was full tilt, too. Yeah. I'm going to run was it that, one more time. Is that cracked expected. already? I'd Crack probably do. That thing is trashed. Okay. I am so sorry, buddy. Hey, it's cool, man. I feel bad for the little Honda, but, you know, it's not having a great coming out of retirement party. How's the camera? Oh, it's my... Uh, hopefully it caught the flip. <laughs> Poor bike. Oh, so gritty. Oh, man, I got to clean it. All right, I'm ready, dude. Right. Uh, I got some starting right here. Uh, go forward a little bit. A little bit more. Oh, go. He's all leaning off that thing like he means business. Oh, we can call the ambulance and let them know we don't need them. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh. We might need them. John's out there running on the track. popped the tire you were faster not faster than you though not faster than me ah. you were a 112 72 ah. yeah didn't even break the engine in thank you tboltusa.com it's awesome it's an awesome it engine. is so awesome honestly the 140 might be the sweet spot before coming into this i thought it might be too much engine but i think this is right this is the sweet spot it is a right you can spend all day on two wheels either doing wheelies or this ways or whatever but it is cool yeah but you got the w man congratulations thank you yeah and uh shoot if you uh <laughs> need any pit bike parts three-wheeler parts visit tboltusa.com and let them know that cars and cameras sent you in the future i already ordered plastics for this thing already ordered new decals and a couple of other parts i'm looking to do a resto mod on this puppy clean it up new plastics make it look better with the hot rotted 140. Like real nice? Maybe not too nice, because then I can't go do okay. that. All right. Yeah. Uh, but man. Oh, and we can't find out how fast it goes because the tires popped. Oh, man. So in a future episode of Cars and Cameras, we're going to show you how fast a 140 ATC 70 will go. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe to Cars and Cameras for future episodes on the ATC 70, on our cross cart, our trophy cart, our bigger three wheelers. We got a lot of things going on. Yep. Uh, so, uh, for sneak peeks on what we're up to in between videos, check us out on Facebook at Cars and Cameras Reviews and Instagram at John underscore Cars and Cameras. Um, if you want to help support what we're doing here, if you uh, are enjoying the videos and you like what we're doing and you want to help support us more than just watching videos and leaving thumbs up, go ahead to our website, cars-cameras.com, and uh, place an order for one of our hats, stickers, t-shirts, hoodies. It's all good, high-quality stuff, guys. Uh, Isaac. At Isaac, it'll be fine. On YouTube and Instagram. Thanks again for watching, guys. Let us know down in the comments, how are you liking this new format with, you know, the two of us in a third... Uh, camera guy. Let us know in the comments what you think of it. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Uh, and why? So, personally, I like it. It lets us both be on screen more. 
yeah. get to have more fun. But let us know what you think, because we care about what you think as well. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you next time. Oh, man. You uh, see what you did to the brim of my hat? <laughs> what did I do? Oh, do I sit on or something? Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I mean, it's I my fault for... How, uh, I did it. how did I do that? I, you ran over it. I ran over the hat? Yeah, when I dropped the hat. Oh, <laughs> obviously. I was like, oh, that wasn't a great idea. <laughs>